The Battle of the Trench At the beginning of the month of Shawwal, in the fifth year after Hijri, the tribes of Quraysh, Ghatafan and their allies advanced in towards al Madinah with 10,000 fighters. This information about their march reached the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He consulted with the Muslims and agreed with the view that the city of al Madinah should be immediately fortified. Salman al-Farisi suggested that a trench be dug around the city to fortify it. al Madinah was surrounded from three sides by lava fields, date plantations and buildings. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, then drew the plan for digging the trench from the open side in the northern part of the city. He camped with the Muslims at foot of the mountain of Silla. He then portioned the space of the trench among them, giving each group of ten Muslims a forty cubit space. The Muslims started digging the trench under excruciating conditions, for that year was the year of drought and severe scarcity. And the time was winter with its freezing cold. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, participated in the work too. He would carry sand and repeat with them the poetry of, of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. The companions would seek support of Allah's Messenger during difficulties and his miracles would become manifest. Al-Bukhari reported on the authority of Jabir who said, We were digging on the day of Al-Khandaq, in other words the trench, and we came across a big solid rock. We went to the Prophet and said, Here is a rock appearing across the trench. He said, I am coming down. Then he got up and a stone was tied to his belly, for we had not eaten anything for three days. So the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, took the spade and struck the big solid rock and it became like sand. The Muslims finished digging the trench in six days. It was 5,000 cubits long, 9 cubits wide and between 7 to 10 cubits deep. The contingents of the polytheists arrived at the outskirts of al Madina. The Quraysh and their allies camped at the points where the torrents met. They were led by Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. The tribe of Ghattafan and those who were with them camped near the mountain of Uhud under the leadership of Uyayna ibn Husan. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, commanded that the women and children be moved to fortresses. The Muslims were then divided into groups and positioned behind the trench. Their number was 3,000 and their base at Salah Hill. Huyay ibn Akhtab sneaked into Banu Quraydha clan instigating them to rise against the Muslims. They initially refused but after much insistence from Huyay they agreed and broke the agreement they made with the Muslims. The polytheists advanced towards al Madinah, but they were surprised by the trench. They marched throughout the entire length of the trench searching for a crack through which they could enter the city. The Muslims were also monitoring up the polytheists movement from the other side. Some polytheist cavalrymen attempted to cross the trench but they were driven back by the Muslims. The two sides then started shooting a plethora of arrows to each other. The confrontations across the trench continued throughout the day. After the sunset, each side went back to its camp. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, organized patrol groups to guard the Muslims throughout the night. On the following day, information reached the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, about the meeting of Huyay ibn Akhtab with the leaders of Banu Quraydha. He sent Zubair ibn Awam for reconnaissance. Zubayr saw them mending their fortresses, preparing their ways and gathering their livestock together. He went back to the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and gave him the information. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sent Sa'ad ibn Ubadah to remind them of their treaty. They treated Sa'ad unbecomingly and proclaimed their readiness to violate the treaty. When the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was sure that they were bent on violating the treaty, he glorified Allah and announced to the Muslims, O Muslims, rejoice about victory and help from Allah. Signs of the Jews' treachery started manifesting when some of them began walking around the fortresses in which the Muslims had put their women, children and old people. 
The rumor mongers started to spread a false rumor that Banu Quraidah were going to betray the Muslims from their behind and that some of the confederates were going to invade al Madinah. The Muslims were greatly distressed and extremely terrified. Allah said, When they came upon you from above you and from below you, and when the eyes grew wild and the hearts reached to the throats and you were harboring doubts about Allah, there the believers were tried and shaken with a mighty shaking. Hypocrisy appeared and some of the Muslims clearly showed their hypocrisy. They started casting doubt on the promise of victory made by Allah and His Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon Him. And they were making calls for withdrawal. Allah the Exalted says, And when the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease of doubt, they said, Allah and His Messenger promised us nothing but delusions. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, assigned some of his companions to patrol the districts of al Madinah and to continuously say Allahu Akbar in a loud voice. He ordered the women that whenever they felt danger, they should raise swords from above the fortress so that the Muslims would see them and come to their help. The polytheists increased their ferocious attacks on the Muslims. A group of the cavalrymen from among the polytheists that included Amr ibn Wud, Ikrima ibn Abi Jahal, Dirar ibn al-Khattab and Nawfal ibn Abdullah crossed the trench. These lot were confronted by Ali ibn Abi Talib in the company of a group of companions. Ali ibn Abi Talib killed Amr ibn Wud. Zubair ibn Awam killed Nawfal ibn Abdullah and the rest of the polytheist cavalrymen fled. A Jew trespassed around the fortress where the Muslims put their women. Some companions quickly went to them and killed the Jew. Some Jews then headed towards the fortress where some prophet's wives and his aunt Sophia were staying. Some of them attempted to climb the wall of the fortress, but Sophia came down, struck the intruder with a rod and killed him. His colleagues were frightened and they retreated. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, felt sorry for the Muslims because of the difficulty he saw them undergoing. He wanted to minimize their enemy's attack and sow discord among the confederates. He consulted the leaders of the clans of Aus and Khazraj concerning talking the tribe of Ghattafan into withdrawing from the confederates with the promise that they would have a third of the harvest of al Madinah if they did. But they said, By Allah, we are not going to give them anything but sword. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, then abandoned the negotiation. The Muslims showed outstanding courage. The skirmishes continued across the trench. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh was fatally wounded. The Muslim patrols continued monitoring the trench and following up the movements of the polytheists and repelling their attacks. They were also monitoring the fortresses and the movements of Banu Uraira and saying takbir aloud in order to frighten them and prevent them from launching a surprise attack against the Muslims. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, took part in the monitoring and night guarding. He did this at a place close to his hut in spite of the severe cold. The siege continued, the skirmishes persisted, but the Muslims showed great perseverance and valour. Five men from among the Ansar were martyred, and two men from among the polytheists were wounded. One of them died immediately, and the other died after returning to Mecca. The Muslims continued the jihad and supplication. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, had the glad tiding of victory. On the 24th day of the siege, Allah answered the supplication of his Messenger and the Muslims. He sent a strong wind. This wind uprooted the polytheists' tents, turned over their pots and filled their hearts with despair. The Quraysh men and their allies then gathered their belongings and withdrew, going back to their homes as dejected losers. The tribe of Ghattafan and those with them also followed suit, in utter disappointment. Allah the Exalted says, And Allah drove back those who disbelieved in their rage. They gained no advantage. Allah suffered for the believers in the fighting by sending against the disbelievers a severe wind and troops of angels. And Allah is ever all strong Almighty. A brilliant day then dawned on the city of Al-Madinah, freeing it from its enemies from outside the trench.
the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, then allowed the Muslims to go back to their homes, happy with the victory and protection from Allah. May Allah be pleased with the companions. May he reward them for the service they rendered for this religion. Blessings and peace of Allah be upon the best of mankind, Muhammad. <laughs>